So being pretty decent on card and doing the whole workstation thing and all the testing that I've done on workstations over the years with the Autodesk University class that I've done, buying the right workstation for Autodesk and Venter, mate, I get asked a lot. And I mean shit loads by all kinds of people ranging from students, you know, mature students through to the people who actually kit out the IT in the entire university and college campuses through to self-employed contractors to the IT departments of enterprises asking what is the best PC and laptop? What should we buy that will run as best and reliably as possible? The likes of AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, Fusion 360, Max, SolidWorks, Katia, you name it, it comes my way. And that question is normally followed up with a but. <laughs> a but, it has to be a Dell or an HP, for example, because that's all our IT department is authorized to buy. Or it has to be less than $2,000. Or but, it has to be less than $1,200. And that's fine. I can always put together a parts list to put together a system that will perform as best as possible based on that price. But what if there's no but? What if... I could put together the best parts list and build the best PC to run 3D CAD as best as technically possible based on parts that are available today. Almost money no object. What would that look like? Well, a little bit something like this. Maybe. not that bad of a looker either mate this is my new daily pc that i'm going to run the channel off my home office is going to be powered off of this uh, so this is now the benchmark mate this is the bar that all of the pcs are going to be measured against when it comes to 2d and 3d card for the time being of course until something else comes out uh, but yeah there's nothing that you can build at an enthusiast level or you can buy at a vendor level from the likes of dell hp lenovo that will run 3d card faster than this with the exception of ridiculous levels of just enthusiast cooling uh, or overclocking of ram and cpu that sort of stuff do you know what i mean like exotic levels of cooling right then let's talk about the specs mate in the description of the video you're going to find a shopping list that's my amazon associate links it's like a parts list if you will for this pc so if you want to buy the exact same pc as i've got and obviously i highly recommend that you do that why would i not it's my pc i built this myself to be the best of the best why would i not recommend that you do that uh, then you can do that from the description of the video and not a single part in this build not a single piece was provided by or sponsored by any company this is all my own creation all my own purchasing so links are in the description i'll get a kickback from any shopping that you do i'll love you forever and i'll owe you a pint so let's start with the specs and the cpu mate which is the beating heart of this and at the core of what makes this so great for 2d and 3d card and that is the Intel i9 10900K 10 core CPU, which boosts to 5.3 gigahertz on a single core. And depending on how you've got your BIOS set up and what kind of cooling you've got, it will sustain 4.9 gigahertz across all 10 cores, which is mental. Speaking of the cooling, I've got the NZXT Kraken X62 all-in-one liquid cooler, which is a bit of an old variation of that model. I've linked to a newer one, but it does a great job, even this older model, at keeping the temps on that 10900K well under control. For the motherboard, I've got the Asus Maximus 12 Formula Z490 motherboard, and I went for this one because it looks the absolute shiz, mate. Uh, and specifically, that OLED screen on the front of the board, I just love that. It's got a little readout telling you what the temperature of the CPU is. And if you're brave enough, which I seriously suggest you don't download asus's garbage armory crate software which will infest your pc with trash that you'll never get rid of and then you can change what reading you've got on there but i'm not putting that anywhere near my p i actually rebuilt the entire pc to get that crap off uh, so I'm, I'm fine with just the cpu temperature as it shows by default uh, for memory i've got 32 gig of corsair dominator platinum rgb white edition ram which runs at 3600 megahertz uh, for storage i've got a samsung 970 pro one terabyte m.2 nvme pci express solid state drive with roughly six terabytes of mechanical mixed storage dotting about in there uh, and powering all of this absolute madness i've got a corsair hxi 1200 watt power supply and if you think that's a bit excessive it ain't mate because it's needed to power these two ladies two 
NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti's in SLI, mate. And those ladies belt out mad heat. Oh, they belt out some warm air. And to shift all that heat, I've got eight Corsair QL140 fans. And if you can only see six, there's two behind the radiator there. But yeah, it's eight Corsair 140mm fans. And that, that case, mate, the case, that's the Lian Li PC011 Dynamic XL case in white, which is embarrassingly underutilized. Uh, with this setup, it's usually found with sort of open loop water cooling with pumps and reservoirs and all that kind of stuff in it. But it looks the absolute doggies danglers. I'm sure you'll agree uh, with this sort of white theme that I've got going on. Uh, no regrets going for that case. It looks amazing. It's really well designed. It was nice to build in. Uh, the material quality is good and no regrets whatsoever with going with that case. All right then, mate. What makes you so sure that this is the best for 3D CAD then? Because I heard from insert generic tech tips channel name here that AMD Threadripper was the best CPU for all productivity work, and that includes CAD. So, yeah, what makes you so sure of yourself? Because you sound quite confident in that. Well, I mean, I'm quite, I'm, I'm pretty okay with this sort of stuff. And, and after speaking with many developers who actually write the code for CAD applications, it's just not actually possible to make the majority of CAD workflows and functions multi-threaded. The majority of a CAD application, whether it be Inventor, Fusion 360, whether it be SolidWorks, whether it be whatever CAD application it is, no one can put a number on it, but a massive percentage of their commands are single threaded, probably 90 plus percent. Some of their commands are part single threaded and part multi-threaded, but the majority of the program is single threaded. So mate, it really is as simple as this. If you are building a PC only for 3D CAD and you want it to run as fast as possible, then you buy the CPU on the newest architecture at the fastest clock speed. But it's never as simple as that though, is it? Because people who use 3D CAD don't just use 3D CAD. You tend to use other applications as well in your workflow. So let's say, for example, it doesn't exist, but if it did, there was a two core CPU that runs at six gigahertz, for example. Okay, you're gonna run 3D CAD like an absolute baller, but then when it comes to doing things like rendering or simulations, those two cores are gonna seriously hold you back and you're going to get slowdowns in those areas. So that wouldn't be a good option to go for. Whereas the 10900K, however, you've got 5.3 gigahertz on a single core, which will run 3D CAD at the fastest rate possible today. But then you've also got 10 cores, which is a great point to be at for any application which can utilize multi-cores. It's not the best. Some AMD Ryzen CPUs do have more cores, which will be better at multi-threaded workloads. But the Intel CPU does run 3D CAD at a faster rate. So it's it's, all, it's a balancing act, mate. It's good to have this many options. And we're talking kind of very slim margins here across a lot of the CPUs at this point. But people who are min-maxing and are looking for the absolute best of the best at one particular application, with that application being 3D CAD, then this is the one to go for. And just to solidify this, as if any proof was needed, we'll take a look at Inventor Bench, which as things stand today is the best Inventor Benchmark tool on the market today, which does a really good job of measuring workstation to workstation, how it performs measuring single-threaded workflows on Autodesk Inventor, which translates pretty well across to other 3D CAD applications, like Fusion 360 and non-Autodesk applications as well. It's a single-threaded test, but it's a good solid baseline for measuring workstation to workstation. So we'll start with how an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X performed on Autodesk Inventor on these single threaded workflows. It resulted in a 14.56 on Inventor Bench, which is at the absolute high end of the scale. Just to give you a rough idea of how these scores kind of lie, uh, between 13 plus, so a 13 to 16 is kind of the best of the best that we've ever seen. Uh, between, I'd say, kind of 10 and 13 are good systems. Between 7 and 10 are kind of average systems, and anything less than 7 is terrible. And that's kind of where systems tend to fall on this sort of a scale. So the AMD 3950X 14.56 is pretty outstanding uh, for an Inventor Bench score. And then looking at the Intel Xeon Workstation 2135 CPU, this is a 6-core CPU with a pretty reasonable boost clock as well on it. This scored an 11.18 on Inventor Bench, so kind of average to good. And then looking at the Intel 10980XE Extreme Edition i9 CPU, uh, 18 cores this one, this scored a 13.55, which is again is kind of pretty good at the higher end of the scale. And then ending with the 10900K, 
which absolutely smashed every other test out of the water, pulling an 18.66 higher by an absolute mile than anything I've ever seen before. I hadn't even seen a 17 on this score before, and this came out with an 18.66. It demolished everything by a mile. It was an outstanding score. I can't even put into words how good this is. If you've not been part of this program uh, over the last few years that it's been running, you may not appreciate how good an 18.66 is. We usually see sort of 14s to 15s at the higher end of the scale that come out with an 18.66 is utterly incredible. So that's it, mate. That's my system. I could go over a whole bunch of other benchmarks like, oh, look at the, look at the two RTX 2080 Ti's absolutely smash rendering, you know, optics, RTX based rendering out of the public. Of course it does. It's got two 2080 Ti's in it. Put on that on a graph with anything else, of course it's going to top the charts. But that's not what this is about. This is just to show you what my PC is, why I have built it, and then just showing how good it is on 3D CAD. Uh, and if you want the same PC as me, the parts list is in the description down below. This is the best of the bestest things done today. It can get better with an overclock. Currently, as things are, I'm running this stock, which is probably going to offend a lot of people given the level of the parts that I've got here. The amount of overclock and headroom I've probably got here is mental, but I am running it stock. Um, but yeah, parts list is in the description. If you want to buy the same PC as me, it's all down there, mate. I'll get a kickback and I'll thank you for that in advance. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the TFI membership program is active. Join button is down there. You get exclusive Autodesk and Med tips and tricks videos through that program, as well as access to the chat area of the live streams on uh, yeah, possibly Fridays, maybe a different day, depending on how things go. And then also access into the Discord server as well. That's the TFI membership program for $4.99 a month. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.